Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. I wanted to go through the dexamethasone suppression test. Before we go through this test, a prerequisite is to understand the adrenal axis and understand the causes of Cushing syndrome. Now, in order to do that, you can go and check out the video that I made. Uh, that should explain everything that you need to know to get into this video. So to start with, why do we do the dexamethasone suppression test? The idea is to confirm a diagnosis of Cushing's syndrome, uh, an excess of cortisol, and then secondly, to understand what the cause of that Cushing syndrome is, where that, what, what the source of that excessive cortisol uh, is. So how is the test done? Well, you give dexamethasone at 10 p.m. at night, and the next morning you measure their cortisol and their ACTH. So it's really done in two stages. The first stage is the low dose test, where one milligram of dexamethasone is used. This test is really to confirm whether the patient's got a normal response and they have a normal adrenal axis, or to confirm that they actually have Cushing syndrome. The second step is the high dose test, where we use eight milligrams of dexamethasone. And this is really to look at what the cause of that excessive cortisol or Cushing syndrome is. Okay, so let's <clears throat> move on to understanding how the test works. So firstly, let's look at the low dose test uh, with one milligrams of dexamethasone. So in a normal situation, this one milligrams of dexamethasone, which is an exogenous steroid, uh, which acts a very similar way to cortisol, will act on the hypothalamus to suppress CRH, it will act on the pituitary to suppress ACTH, which in turn will cause a reduction in cortisol. So a normal response to one milligram low dose dexamethasone suppression test is a reduction in cortisol. Now what happens if you have an if you have uh, a high level of cortisol to begin with, uh, really meaning that you have a Cushing's uh, syndrome. Well, uh, this Cushing syndrome is already so high that this measly one milligram of dexamethasone uh, is not enough to cause any suppression. If your body's used to having loads of cortisol, adding another one milligrams of dexamethasone won't make too much difference. So a positive result from the low dose dexamethasone suppression test is that cortisol remains high or really within the normal range. And this is suggestive of a Cushing syndrome. Okay, so now let's look at if you have a positive low dose dexamethasone suppression test, you go on to do a high dose test with eight milligrams of dexamethasone. So now let's look at the scenarios. Let's say you have Cushing's disease, right? Where you have uh, an ex where you have a pituitary adenoma that's producing ACTH that's acting on the adrenal gland to produce loads of cortisol, and that's that Cushing's disease is the cause of your high cortisol. Now, this big dose of dexamethasone is enough to cause suppression of the anterior pituitary, even though there's an adenoma there. So what you find if you have a high dose dexamethasone suppression test and Cushing's disease is that it's enough to s reduce the ACTH and in turn reduce the cortisol. So this is what you have uh, in a pituitary adenoma. As a result of the uh, as a response to the test. So now let's look at the scenario where you have an adrenal gland tumor and it's this tumor or this adrenal adenoma that's producing loads of cortisol. Now this big dose of dexamethasone will head up to the hypothalamus and reduce CRH. It'll head over to the pituitary and block ACTH but it has no effect on the adrenal gland so you still get this large amount of cortisol being pumped out. So the result in an adrenal tumor, 
from the dexamethasone suppression test is that you have high cortisol and a low ACTH. Okay. So now let's look at the final scenario where you have a lung cancer or some other uh, neoplasm that's pumping out ectopic ACTH. Right. So you give them the dexamethasone, it heads over to the hypothalamus and reduces the CRH, it heads over to the pituitary, and this stops producing ACTH, but you still have loads of ACTH in your system because it's being produced from somewhere else. It's being produced from this cancer in the lungs. As a result, it continues to stimulate the adrenal gland and you continue to have a high cortisol. So in a paraneoplastic Cushing's, uh, a high dose dexamethasone test will lead to a raised ACTH and a raised cortisol. So let's look at a sort of summary of that. So in a low dose test, if you have low cortisol afterwards, that means you have a normal adrenal axis and no Cushing's. If you have a high or normal cortisol afterwards, that suggests you have Cushing syndrome. Now, you go on to have a high dose test. If you have a low cortisol after the high dose test, that's diagnostic of Cushing's disease, which remember is a pituitary adenoma, and the eight milligrams is enough dexamethasone to suppress that adenoma, leading to a reduction in cortisol. Now, uh, if you have a high or normal cortisol after a high dose of dexamethasone, but your ACTH is low, this suggests an adrenal Cushing's. So there's an adrenal tumor that's pumping out the ACTH, uh, that's pumping out the cortisol. ACTH is still suppressed, uh, but cortisol remains high or normal. Now let's say you have a high or normal cortisol and the ACTH is high. This is because the ACTH is coming from somewhere other than the pituitary gland, i.e. Uh, a small cell lung cancer. So you end up with a high ACTH and a resulting high cortisol. So I hope that's uh, cleared up some of the confusion about the dexamethasone suppression test and you now understand how to interpret all of the results. If you like this video, uh, like or comment or subscribe on the YouTube channel, head over to zerotofinals.com for more resources and I'll see you next time.